Ah, all right. The time has finally come. Let's do this. The Neo Saban Era of Power Rangers. Classified as the new era of Saban seasons for the Power Rangers franchise. Neo being a prefix that indicates the idea of new. What does that really mean though? That means that Haim Saban and all of his production people, maybe some new guys, they're getting into Power Rangers, they got into Power Rangers, and now they're reworking the show. They've been reworking the show since 2011. But what does the Neo Saban era of Power Rangers actually mean? This is yet another shakeup and changeup for the production, the style of a show that we all very much love. In this era, we've had four teams and eight seasons. Power Rangers Samurai and Super Samurai, Power Rangers Megaforce and Super Megaforce, Power Rangers Dino Charge and Dino Super Charge, and now Power Rangers Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel. This, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the Neo Saban era of Power Rangers, and the time has finally come for us to take a nice look back at what these seasons have done for the franchise and for us, the fans. What's up guys, I'm Ryder Mitchell from Infinite Attitude and today we're going to be taking a look back at the Neo Saban era of Power Rangers. This is going to be my retrospective on the entire era so far. But before I even jump into it, I want to just say these opinions are fully mine. They're just mine. You guys, you, I'm sure, I'm, all, I'm actually I'm positive. You have your own outlook on these seasons and what this era is. These are just my opinions. So, that being said, I'm just going to look at the, the shows kind of as a whole, and then we'll talk Super Seasons later. Why does the Neo Saban era of Power Rangers even exist? Well, the answer is kind of simple, but also kind of complex. The basic idea of it is that Disney, who was making the show from, I believe, 2003 to 2009, basically said, hey, we, we've had a run with this, we're kind of tired of this, we've bumped it to this other network thing, you know, we're, we're just not feeling Power Rangers, we don't want to be associated, we're, we're just going to end the show here with RPM. And it, it took some time to get it off the ground, all right? It, it was about a two-year hiatus. RPM aired in 2009, there was no new season in 2010, and 2011 was the official premiere of Power Rangers Samurai on Nickelodeon. Now that you kind of have some more background information, let's finally get into this thing. Power Rangers Samurai was the 18th season of Power Rangers as a whole, the overall show. And in a sense, it was a very fresh start from everything we've seen in the, in the last couple years. Because prior to this show, we as the fans, we were living in the Disney era of Power Rangers. And especially recently, the most recent season was RPM, which was a completely other dimension in Corinth. And it was kind of like futuristic -y, dystopian type thing. And it was, it was just a very big like, all right, we're going to hit the reset button with Saban. So Saban with Samurai, their idea was a symbol power is passed down from generation to generation so if it's worked into your bloodline you at some point in your life will get the power of a power ranger and the power ranger samurai all this stuff it was really cool i, I like that idea of that that being said what they decided to do with the show is kind of make it more take it back to mighty Morphin power rangers where you had these kids that you know they're they're living their lives and they're 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 cracking jokes and then oh okay well there, there's a monster all right you know let's do it maybe let's morph up and then they go for it and then they fight and then at the end of the day everything's okay and like I said, there was something there. There is something there. The idea that this power is passed down from generation to generation, like that's pretty cool. But they were trying to go in this other direction that is what we will call here ultra kid friendly. All right. This is going to be a massive theme throughout this retrospective. The concept of Power Rangers is basic, and that is it's a show 
for children. It, it, that's the concept. That's the ideology behind the scenes. They are making a superhero show for like kids, maybe, you know, 11 below. Okay. That's the idea. But at the same time, you're looking at an audience that at, at that time, 2011, that was like, all right, well, we've grown up with Power Rangers in some aspect or another. We're all a little bit older now. We want to see something. Saban, give us something. And instead, Saban went ahead and targeted a much younger audience, focusing on things like teamwork and hard work and friendship and companionship and very little inner conflict. Basically, everybody's friends except, oh, yeah, well, they're, 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 they're those Nylock over there. They're, 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 those are the villains that are ultra disposable that we don't really care too much about, except for a few, which we'll touch on in a little bit. And that's the problem for me with Samurai. There wasn't enough on the actual story. It was all about, oh, okay, we're friends. Yay, everyone's great. Yes, it's so bright and colorful and bad acting. Yay. This takes us into the Rangers. And the Rangers themselves, I actually enjoyed the Red Ranger. I thought, you know, there's some solid concept behind there. I like the dojo type thing. And I don't know, I, there's aspects of this show that I enjoy. But the problem with everyone else is, number one, the acting. Okay. Act, bad acting stems from two problems. There's usually two problems. Number one, the actor themselves isn't that great. But also, the writing isn't that great. And the actor can't do much with a very one-dimensional script. And that's been a problem for a lot of the Neo Saban era shows. They're, they're very one-dimensional scripts for actors that are just kind of coming into the acting business. And they're trying to figure out the, the acting style themselves. So it's just kind of a recipe for bad acting. And it comes off really choppy and robotic and not great. And going along with the writing, the characters are kind of all one two-dimensional. There, there's nothing much to them. You've got, oh, there's your pretty girl. Oh, there's your relationship with between two rangers that won't really go anywhere. Oh, there's your kind of brooding macho leader who's not really that brooding or macho. Then you've got, oh, you've got the kind of little bit nerdy guy, but also not a nerdy guy. And now you got the cool, fun guy who likes video games and skateboarding. And it was like... These are the cliches of Power Rangers that have been used over and over and over again. And they were finally starting to get away from that. They really were with seasons like Jungle Fury and RPM. You, you kind of had it still, but also everyone was kind of their own person, own character. These in Samurai, it was like, all right, well, we've gotten a new cast to, to fill these slots for these specific stereotypish type characters that we love doing in every season. The villain concept to me was pretty solid. You know, they're trying to flood the earth that Nylock trying to like come out from this underworldish type land dimension and I liked it. I was like, oh, we're gonna flood the earth. That's a cool new different motive. That It's just it is. Unfortunately, the execution was poor. It didn't feel important. It just kind of felt like a side story that oh, Master Xandroid, he's trying to come back to, to his full health, but he's literally trying to come back to his full health for like three-fourths of the entire series including Super Samurai, and that's like not okay. I, I didn't feel enough. The villain that I did love was Decker, which I think a lot of people love Decker. I thought there was a lot of fun stuff they did there, but they didn't focus on it enough. And it was like, it was just this ultimate duel that they were building to this whole entire time. I don't know. A lot of the acts, it goes with the writing. It's just, it's not well executed. But I look back on Samurai, and I will be honest, while I don't like this season very much, I personally consider it one of the worst of the entire show as a whole. I do. I don't think it's the worst, though. That, that'll come later. Trust me. I don't think Samurai is the worst season ever. I don't think it's particularly good. Power Rangers Mega Force, the legendary, super, ultra legendary, mega, super legendary force, legend, ultra fun, super season from the 20th anniversary of Power Rangers. It's gonna be legendary, bro. Unfortunately, I was a victim to that false narrative that was placed into my brain going into Power Rangers and Megaforce. Like I said, the 20th anniversary season. Prior to the show, I saw the suits and I'm like, wow, like they picked those suits. That, that, those suits 
because they somewhat resemble the Mighty Morphin suits. And like, wow, what, are they going to go full back to Mighty Morphin? Are they going to bring back returning rangers? How are they going to do this? Is the, Oh, wow, the ghost say he's kind of like Zordon. And, oh, the villains are going to be fantastic. I mean, look, the hype level was off the charts. And unfortunately, I don't know why I had done this because I didn't really like Samurai that much. And I was, I was just ready for something new, I think, personally. And I was excited. I, I, I liked the Morpher. There was just a lot of hype. But to me, I will get this off my chest. And I'm sorry for people who do enjoy this season. I think this is the worst season of Power Rangers ever. The storyline is basically okay. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm very shaky on the storyline, and this is because it's confusing because they don't shine enough attention to it. There's kind of this, this weird robot cyborg war with these kind of alien insect creatures. It seems like that's what I got, kind of, and you know they're called the War Star Aliens or something like that. And there's three main guys. You've got Admiral Malcor. Pox, I think, was the guy who was like the main al uh, one of the main insect aliens, and then you had Vrock. All right, Vrock again, probably the best villain of the show, but that's not saying much. The set for the villains was just that was brutal. I mean, that was like one one room that they had the the villain stand in. They're like, oh, look at our ship. That's not a ship, guys. That's a room that you have some men standing in suits. Okay, that's nothing. I'm not impressed by that. That looks ultra fake. And then they're like, oh, the aliens are invading. All right. Invade. Right? Like, what What are the stakes there? They're just going to invade and then do what? Oh, they're going to take over the world. How? How are they going to take over the world? Oh, and they're going to just do it. That, like, that's the concept of the show. And it's flat on ridiculous. On top of that, though, you throw at me rangers are rangers all right i'm like fine i hate the concept but maybe i'll like the rangers and the suits and all this and it's like i feel bad for the actors because i feel like they want to do something cool but this show falls victim to the same problems as samurai awful writing and bad execution if you thought samurai's characters were very one or two dimensional you haven't even you, you can't even fathom what the, the megaforce characters are because number one I feel, like i feel like the actors could have done a lot better and they, they very well were capable of it it was the writing that was holding them back i know this for a fact i feel bad for the actors and i have nothing against any of these actors i i just it just didn't come off well be it troy who's supposed to be like oh he likes karate for like a day and then he's like oh i'm super i'm, I'm, I'm a macho guy right i'm gonna be the leader oh, i'm a new kid you know wow i had this dream one day and i don't know why this, i mean i just did bro and that's what i'm going for and then you've got guess what the no noah the nerdy kid yeah uh -huh, you got your nerdy kid then you got oh guess what the black ranger he's a sports guy and he likes girls and oh wait what? There's another relationship between two rangers that doesn't go anywhere? Yeah. Oh, then you got the pink ranger who's, oh, I'm the pretty girl. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was almost a, like, the, the, the characters were like a carbon copy of Samurai placed in a megaforce, and they, they just give, gave different actors. And then they didn't change clothes. Oh, no. It, it was just a disaster. It's a disaster season for me. Uh, again, I, I feel I'm sorry. Maybe you guys like it, and if you like it, you're you're free to like it. I just feel like compared to what other seasons have done, and even seasons after Megaforce, like Dino Charge and Ninja Steel, it's possible to make something that's at least kind of interesting. And then Super Megaforce came around, which I it kind of redeems it a little, but not much. We'll talk about that later in the Super Season segment. But I just want you, I want to set up my expectations going into Power Rangers Dino Charge, okay? It was like rock bottom. It was like negative 50,000 billion. I was so pissed off at Saban, and I just couldn't believe it. I heard Chip Lynn was coming in a Dino Charge, but it, it just, I didn't, I didn't feel it. It was like, I was like, fine, just end the show. I'm, I'm done with this. Power Rangers Dino Charge. Like I said, the expectations were at like negative 50 billion. I had no expectations, didn't care very much. I was kind of excited by the suits, but I, I don't know. It was like, wow, this, this is going to be the same thing as Megaforce, and I, I couldn't take it. Here's the turning point, though. There's one turning point where I started to kind of get my hopes up slightly. It went from, like, negative 50 billion to, like, zero, okay? It went up a little bit, and it was when, it was, I believe it was Thanksgiving Day, or the day before Thanksgiving, 2014, 
and Saban and uh, whatever, Nickelodeon or whatever, they released the Power Rangers Dino Charge theme song. And I'm like, what is this? This can't be real. This has got to be fan made. I listened to this thing. Oh, it was like, it was legit music to my ears. It's probably one of my favorite themes to date. I love it to, to so many extents. And I'm like, wait a second. They're, they're not saying their names in this theme. You know, they're not going Tyler, Shelby, Riley. It wasn't just a total fake weird ripoff thing from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which we had gotten in Samurai and Megaforce. No, this was something new. And I'm like, well, they're putting thought into the theme song. Could this maybe translate to the show? Keep in mind, my expectations were so low for this show. So the first episode rolls around a week early. And I watched it on Nick.com, and comp again, compared to everything I had seen the past four years, I was blown away. I was, and you can go back and watch my review for this. I, you can hear the hope in, in my voice because I'm like, this is actually good. This is actually something I want to see. But then I was also a little skeptical because I'm like, well, I, the first episodes, they always have been setting things up and then they never pay them off. They paid them off, guys. They paid off all those things that they set up, pretty much. The basic storyline is that there's 10 Energems that are, I guess they're, they're just these kind of energy things that belong to this guy named Keeper. And 65 billion year, million years ago, whatever, when the dinosaurs went extinct, what happened was this guy Keeper, he was under attack and he entrusted these Energems to these 10 dinosaurs. And these dinosaurs, their, their spirits would kind of bind or bond with the Energems and then Keeper survives or whatever. And this guy Sledge that he's fighting, who's a bounty hunter, who's after them, he kind of gets blessed in the space. Millions and billions of years later, you meet our Rangers that they're all kind of part of this museum expo. They all work in this museum and they all get the Energems and and now they have the powers of the dinosaurs. Kind of off the bat, it sounds a lot like Dino Thunder, but I had no problem with that. You know, they were at least putting thought into it. There was thought, there was cool-ish special effects. Where does the creativity come from? Well, it's called something called, I believe, the writing. And that, that's kind of referring to the storyline. That's also referring to the Rangers. The Rangers, wow, right? This is the first time I've been enthralled in characters since RPM. You had our, our leader, Tyler, and he was kind of like this, you know, fun kind of out there guy, but he had a purpose. He had an actual motive and the, the writing and the acting was solid. It shall be another character that was like not a total, oh, here's a carbon copy of Megaforce and Samurai. No, this is like, you know, she's an out there girl. She, she's, you know, focused on studies. She's kind of a tomboyish a little bit. It was like, wow, I, it, it's refreshing to see this. Then you throw in characters like Coda, a caveman, and Ivan, a knight. Like those are things that have not really been done before, especially a caveman man and it's like wow you're making them rangers and it, it just it felt genuine and creative and i appreciate that that's all i needed in the other seasons on top of that sledge and his ship and the set for his ship was to me just so fun i really love the sledge character and i even more so love the snide character which we'll talk about later and when we get to the super season segment but i thought the villains were compelling they had a motive they were after something of course power rangers dino charge is not a perfect season and i don't necessarily think it's in the top five best seasons of all time but I, it's definitely not even for at least for me it's not even close to samurai or megaforce Power Rangers Ninja Steel, the most recent season of Power Rangers and the most recent team. We're coming off the heels of Dino Charge, which, yeah, maybe had a little bit of a rocky ending in Supercharge, but still I was like, I will take anything you give me if it's at least similar to Dino Charge. And that's what we got in Ninja Steel. To me, is it the, to the quality and am I as compelled with the first season as uh, Dino Charge? No, I don't think it's as compelling. And I'll tell you why. This show is it's somewhat very, very similar to Dino Charge, almost too similar. It's this whole idea of the Ninja Nexus Prism. And it's got these five power stars or six power stars in it. And they can only be pulled out of, of the prism by these the five teenagers or whatever. Okay, so that's the basic gist of it. And there's this, you know, super galaxy game show in space or whatever. And you've got your champ Galvanax. And the other part to the, the concept of the show is there's this thing called the Ninja Steel, which was 
was encasing the Ninja Nexus prism. And this Ninja Steel can be molded down and made into Ninja Power Stars. And these Power Stars can be used for power-ups and zords and different modes and battleizers and whatever. And it's pretty cool. I, I enjoy the idea of throwing the stars into the prism and they come out. Prism's somewhat of a mentor in a sense, and there's this whole mystery of what happened to the Red Ranger Brody's father, and then there's this awesome mystery of what happened to his brother. So the concept's solid. It, it's not maybe the best thing I've ever heard, but it's solid. I took it, and I, I, I was kind of hooked for a, a bit, and I was like, alright, I'm ready to see how this goes. The Rangers leading this whole show, I personally thought to be really solid. Once again, they're not these carbon copies of these stereotypical characters that we always see in Power Rangers. Someone who's taken as a child and held prisoner on a spaceship, okay? That's our Red Ranger. Our Pink Ranger is into science and creating and innovating. Our White Ranger, she's kind of into dogs and animals and kind of everything. She's just fun and she's dating the Yellow Ranger. Sure, it's a typical Power Ranger relationship, but it's something that's already established and not a stupid arc that we have to wait 40 episodes to see pay off. The Blue Rangers into magic and all that, and I thought that was pretty cool, and I was into it. And of course, the Yellow Ranger, you know, into bikes and cars and whatever, but it, it was, it was, the characters were great, and I really love this cast. I love the Ninja Steel cast. And even the Gold Ranger. The Gold Ranger was this music star, and there was this big twist where he's actually Aiden, or whatever, okay? It's his, the Red Ranger's brother. But I thought the concept in the Rangers were really solid. It's like, it's not a bad show. I don't think it's a bad season. It's just kind of bland. It's like they, they had things going, and then it just kind of was like... I don't know, it was like the same taste in your mouth every episode. And this was because of some things like the villains. Now the villains, uh, I think that there was potential there. You had Ripcon and Matamodius. Matamodius I think is the best villain, and I'm very glad that she's going to be back on in Super Ninja Steel. But our main villain, Galvanax, was they play him off as this ultra warrior. And I thought that was pretty solid, and he's his champ. But they don't do much with him. His goal is literally to obtain the power stars, and that's it. And then you had people like Cosmo Royale who kept it interesting, and the the set was interesting, but again, the, the reason, the motive behind it, it just kind of felt very lazy. I think that's the best way to put it. The main problem with the show is there are two characters, really, and they go by the name Victor and Monty, and they're this awful comedic relief that are, they serve the purpose of literally nothing. You know, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I chuckled at a few of their jokes, but most, like, 90% of the time, it's like, please, go go focus your time on the villains. Let me see some awesome thing with Galvanax. No, instead, they're going to make Galvanax very one-dimensional and make, you know, give four or five fart jokes to these guys per episode. And it's like, wow. But overall, I think it's just, it's not a bad season. I just think it's fine. It, it's good. I enjoy it, but it's not anything that I'm blown away by. And those are them, guys. Those are our four teams of Rangers that we have met these past eight years. And those first seasons are either really good, they're either really bad, but there has always been, for some damn reason, because of Nickelodeon, something called the Super Season. <laughs> These super seasons, they are the second season of 20 episodes to the first season. So, Samurai, 20 episodes. One year later, Super Samurai, because now they're super, and it's also 20 episodes. So, in total, it's a second season. Megaforce, 20 episodes. A year later, Super Megaforce, another 20 episodes. Dino Charge, 20 episodes. Dino Super Charge, 20 episodes. Ninja Steel, 20 episodes. And now, Super Ninja Steel, 20 episodes. And again, like I've said, they're, they're either good, they're bad, whatever. My main issue with the super seasons is that they're just a lot of filler episodes these shows in total these seasons they only really need about 30 episodes that's what i would say about maybe 30 maybe 32 so if you kind of do the math there that's about eight or nine filler episodes in a season and that's ridiculous especially for a show that's called power rangers about fighting and villains and superheroes my other problem with it is that it just is a excuse for saban to sell more toys it's the idea like look the toys are a really fun part and aspect of the show it's like you watch them on screen then you want to go buy them that's awesome i love that 
but I don't like the idea of, oh, wow, well, because now they're wearing a white coat, they're super! Super Mega Force, however, to me, this was something different that I did enjoy, and this is because for Super Mega Force, they used different suits. They used suits from Japan called the Gokaiju or whatever, and this is what really sold me on Mega Force. This is why I say that Super Mega Force redeemed it, the, the show, for me slightly, because I, I really saw this almost as something separate from the, the first season, and they, they had completely different villains. You had almost completely different suits. You had a completely different sixth ranger. You were actually building to something cool. I really enjoyed getting to see some of my favorite rangers in, in like a modern, you know, show uh, from the past when I was growing up. So it was really cool getting to see some of that. But now we're going into currently, it actually starts in about a week, Super Ninja Steel. And this is going to be our 25th anniversary. And it, is it going to be something legendary? Is it going to be something super legendary, mega, super, whatever? All that crap that we, we had seen in, in Mega Force and Super Mega Force, these things that were claimed to me and us, that this is going to be something amazing, I can't necessarily say. I'm not really, like, holding out hope for it to be the best show ever. There's potential there for it. But what I will say about this Neo Saban era, this is it, all right? And when I look back at it, do I, my, my, like, these are some of my favorite seasons of all time? No, these are actually some of my least favorite seasons of all time. But at the same time, there are children that are growing up on these shows, and they love them. They love these shows. And I think that's what's important here. While I might not love them, and maybe you don't love them, the next guy might. And maybe the, the kid that may be watching this loves them. And for that reason alone, I think that every era and season is special in its own way because it touches a different group or a different audience. And that's why Power Rangers is so special because you do have that original Saban era. You do have that Disney era. You do have this Neo Saban era. When I look back at this, am I ever going to be like, wow, this is fantastic? Never. I will never say that. But I will say this is a part of the Power Rangers fandom and culture and universe. I will never deny that. There's always things to be appreciated about everything in life and every TV show, even shows or movies that you that you hate that, that suck there's still cool things to appreciate so let me know your thoughts on the neo saban era of power rangers and what your expectations are for super ninja steel next week as you may expect i will be reviewing that show and that season when it does come out next week so make sure you're subscribed to get that thank you so much for watching and i'm Ryder signing off with infinite attitude and goodbye Gila. Let's get, 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 let's get